So here is where the pain really starts for me. We have either eight or nine initial value problems with Laplace transforms to go through. And a lot of these are relatively time consuming, um, you know, on the same level or worse as uh, non-homogeneous second order systems. So this, eh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's not much else to say. Let's, uh, let's go for it. So we have 10. Uh, y of s is equal to the Laplace transform of y of t. And uh, it is the solution to this initial value problem we're looking for y of 0. This is the uh, kindest one, kindest problem we'll find on this list because they're not making us do the inverse Laplace transform. We're looking for capital Y of s evaluated at 0. And this is the only time, the only time I'm going to write out these formulas. You better remember them now. Uh, the Laplace transform of y double prime will give us alpha squared y alpha minus alpha y zero minus y prime zero. The Laplace transform of y prime will give us alpha y alpha minus y zero and the Laplace transform of y will give us y alpha. I uh, kind of remember these by looking at the, the pattern in them. Uh, your, your alpha terms, whatever uh, alpha is multiplied into your, your y term, uh, always starts at the same number as your, your derivative and goes down by 1 each time and, uh, and eventually uh, you know, disappears. And then we get always a y alpha term and then a y at 0, y, uh, yeah, uh, the zeroth derivative of y at 0, and then the first derivative of y at 0. And this will continue counting up until we are at uh, the n minus 1th, the n minus 1th derivative, where n is the number of derivatives we're taking of y. So in this case, we go all the way up to the first derivative. And that, uh, that pattern continues here. We have 1 alpha here and then 0 alphas here and we get a y alpha and y at zero is one fewer derivative than uh, y prime. So we stop there. With these in mind, for this problem in particular, it's good to note that both uh, y prime and y no prime at zero evaluate to zero. So for our purposes, we can ignore all of these terms. And in fact, I'm going to erase all of this. In general, with these questions, we uh, really need our extra space. So solving this, this y double prime, uh, and I should be clear, we're taking the Laplace transform of both sides. This y double prime will become uh, alpha squared y at alpha, and then this 2y will become plus 2y alpha. This other side is a little, this other side is a little uh, more interesting to work with. We have u2 of t multiplied by some function where all of our t's are replaced with t, whoops, t minus 2's. And what uh, 13 tells us is that this will just be, this will just be e to the, e to the negative 2 alpha multiplied by the Laplace transform of this function without any of the minus 2's in that, in it. So that would be t e to the negative 3t. And looking, looking right here, uh, t to the n e to the a t. Oh god, I hope that wasn't too loud for you. I'm going to turn, gonna turn my sound off. Um, yeah, whoops, sorry about that. This will just, this will just give us uh, t to the n, n in our case is 1, so we get 1 factorial and just so everyone knows where I'm looking, it's right here. Uh, 1 factorial divided by s minus a, where a is negative 3, so alpha plus 3 uh, quantity squared, because n uh, is equal to 1, so n plus 1 is 2. Interesting. 
very cool. So uh, all we have to do at this point is factor out a y of alpha. This gives us alpha squared plus two on this side equals e to the negative two alpha times one over alpha plus three squared. And then we can divide out this alpha squared plus two. Alpha squared plus two into the denominator over here. And as I said, this is a very uh, kind problem as they go because all we're doing is solving for this at zero. That will be one divided by um, y at zero. There we go. Is uh, one divided by three squared. So nine times two. One over eighteen is our answer. Eleven. Let's solve this uh, this thing. <laughs> I'm extremely embarrassed. The first, I don't know six problems I recorded with the uh, Dirac delta function. I'm actually not sure if it's a Dirac delta function fully or if it's a more general just delta function, but it's, but it's, it's a delta function. I called it gamma uh, for, for many problems, which is infuriating for me now, but whatever. Uh, taking the Laplace transform of both sides, noting that all of our initial conditions work out pretty nicely, we can we can uh, solve this like so. Uh, the Laplace transform of our left side will be alpha squared y alpha plus four y alpha. And then we're going to uh, use the, the, uh, the, the fact that the Laplace transform of delta at t minus c is e to the, e to the negative cs. So this will give us two e to the negative pi alpha. And remember that negative two is just the constant multiplied in over there. And that will uh, stay outside of our Laplace transform and uh, continue on down here. So factoring out, factoring out a y alpha, we have alpha squared plus four, which we can, we can divide over one over alpha squared plus four like that. And since we have since we have e to the gotta erase this. Since we have e to the negative uh, cs where in our case c in our case c is uh, pi times some function of s in our case 1 over alpha squared plus 4. Sorry that I'm mixing variables like alpha and s uh, so often we can just uh, we can do our inverse Laplace transform like that. So uh, we don't even have to do any uh, partial fraction nonsense. This will be uh, the, in the inverse Laplace transform of y alpha will give us y of t, and that will be 2 uh, uc of t. So that's u pi of t coming from the c value in this exponent. And then um, multiplied by the Laplace transform, sorry, the inverse Laplace transform, I do that all the time, of this, where we replace all of the t's that we get with t minus c. So uh, doing that, doing that, we get uh, one half sine 2t. And why one half? Because in order for us to have things in the form where we can take our inverse Laplace transform and get, get a sign out, we need, uh, we need this value here is two squared. We need our numerator up here to also be two. So we can change this to a two and multiply by one half on the outside to compensate. That one half persists uh, after we take our Laplace transform and we're left with we are left with u pi of t uh, times sine of 2t. Let's solve this initial whoops, value problem. This one looks like a whole lot of fun. OK. We have y to the fourth, uh, y to the fourth as a, as a derivative. Um, and that's going to be our, our, Laplace tra our Laplace transform of that is going to be uh, alpha to the fourth y alpha minus y at zero uh, times alpha cubed 
and that's no good, that's also equal to zero, and uh, then we have a minus y prime term, blah, blah, blah. All of these go to zero, but at the end we will have a minus y triple prime at zero, so that's minus one. And then we're adding the Laplace transform of y double prime. Well, the Laplace transform of y double prime will be alpha squared y alpha, and then uh, the highest derivative uh, you know, term after this will just involve uh, this guy right here, these two. Uh, so we will get zero for both of those terms. Now we can set this equal to the Laplace transform of delta at t minus one. So that gives us e to the negative alpha. We can add this one over, factor out a y alpha. This gives us alpha to the fourth plus alpha squared. And so we can say that y of alpha is equal to e to the negative alpha over alpha squared, alpha to the fourth plus alpha squared, which we can factor to alpha squared times alpha squared plus one, and then plus one over alpha squared, alpha squared plus one. So we only need to do one partial fraction in here because once we have the partial fraction uh, for this guy, we can use it to figure out what our partial fraction, what, well, we'll know the partial fraction over here, but e to the negative cs, where in our case c is one times f of s, will just give us u one of t, because our, our c is one, uh, multiplied by the Laplace transform of what's left uh, after we do our partial fraction with all of our t's, replaced with t minus c's. So we can say that one over alpha squared times alpha squared plus one is equal to a x, not a x, a alpha plus b over alpha squared plus c alpha plus d over alpha squared plus one. And this will get a little messy in here. I'm gonna shrink this down so we have a little bit more space to work with. Multiplying our denominator up into both of these terms, we will end up with a alpha cubed, a alpha cubed plus a alpha plus b alpha squared plus b plus c, and I'll, I'll sort this a little nicer, plus c alpha cubed plus d alpha squared, and all of this is equal to one. Since we only have one constant term, uh, this b here, we know that b is equal to one, saying it equal to its constant counterpart on the other side. Uh, then if b is equal to one, we can use that with our squared terms. Uh, b alpha squared plus d alpha squared is equal to zero. So b is equal to negative d, so d is equal to uh, negative one. And then additionally, a alpha cubed plus c alpha cubed, a alpha cubed plus c alpha cubed is equal to zero, and a alpha is equal to zero, so both a and c are equal to zero. All of which means that we can rewrite our f of alpha as, as e to the negative alpha multiplied by, multiplied by, well, our b is one, so I'll go up here and replace that with a one, and then we have a minus one as our d. So this gives us one over alpha squared minus one over alpha squared plus one, and then plus, plus one over alpha squared, minus one over alpha squared plus one. All of these things, we know uh, how, to take, how to take their inverse Laplace transforms. So the inverse Laplace transform of f of alpha will just be uh, u, u1 of t, that's coming from the c value up here multiplied by negative alpha, and then all of this multiplied by uh, the Laplace trans, the inverse Laplace transform of everything in here, replacing our t's with t minus ones. So 
the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over alpha squared will give us t, so we get t minus 1. And then we're subtracting, uh, well, this will be the sine of t, so sine t minus 1. And then out here, we just get plus t minus sine t. And looking around, uh, I see... Uh, let's see, we're looking for negative sine terms. So uh, there we go, D should be our answer. 15, we're finding the solution of this guy right over here. Taking the Laplace transform of both sides, we get, we get, start up here, I guess, uh, alpha, pen is not cooperating, alpha squared, y alpha, minus y at 0 times alpha, so that is a alpha, oh great, we have a's and alphas, uh, and then minus y prime at 0, so minus b, and then uh, the Laplace transform of 4y will be plus 4y alpha, and this is equal to, this is equal to, I'll just say, uh, capital G of capital G of alpha, if you can even read that over there. So rearranging some things and factoring some things out, we'll see that y alpha multiplied by alpha squared plus 4 is equal to G of alpha plus A alpha plus A alpha plus B. That looks good uh, to me. So let's divide things out. We see that y going to need more space, y alpha is equal to g of alpha over alpha squared plus 4 plus a alpha over alpha squared plus 4 plus b over alpha squared plus 4. So uh, two of these we are pretty sure uh, we know what to do with because we have we have uh, something uh, in the form, I'll go find it on the sheet, uh, s over s squared plus a squared. Uh, so this right here, our, I'll just start building our y of t. This right here will lead to, uh, we can factor out an a, and we're just left with, we're just left with the inverse Laplace transform of, or the Laplace transform of cosine at. So this is this is a cosine 2t. This one also we can uh, deal with. Let's multiply by 2 on the top and 1 half out here and factor out this b and we see that things are now in the form of the inverse Laplace transform of sine of 2t. So we get b over 2 sine of 2t, and then this final term over here is a little bit a little bit weirder, uh, but essentially we have things in the form uh, some function of s, in our case f of alpha is 1 over alpha squared plus 4, and g of alpha is just g of alpha. And we see that this is equal to uh, equal to the inverse Laplace transform of capital F of alpha, where we replace all of the t's with uh, t minus with t minus tau's. So let's let's do that. We have plus our integral from zero to t of f of t minus tau. Well, the inverse Laplace transform of this will give us one half sine of two t, but we'll replace that with t minus tau. And then, uh, since g is unknown and it started off like this, we know that the uh, inverse Laplace transform of capital G of alpha will be g of t, but we're writing it as g of tau in here, d tau. And looking, looking around for an answer that matches 
I am seeing a cosine b over 2. Uh, yeah, b, b looks correct to me. Oof, I have to start this question uh, completely over. So uh, not too happy, but here we go. Uh, taking the Laplace transform of both sides, we get alpha squared y alpha squared. Uh, no, that's not squared. And then both of our initial condition terms, in fact, all the initial condition terms associated with any of these derivatives all go to zero. Plus two y plus two alpha. Oh no, I was doing this before. Two alpha y alpha plus five y alpha is equal to uh, e to the negative seven alpha. That's just the Laplace transform of delta at t minus c, we get e to the negative cs. So we can say that y alpha is equal to e to the negative 7 alpha, all divided by alpha squared plus 2 alpha plus 5, which is special because we can rewrite this as e to the negative 7 alpha times 1 over alpha plus 1 squared plus 2, <laughs> 2 squared. And further, uh, we can say that this is 2, and we have a 1 half factor over there. And we are ready uh, to solve, because we see that we have e to the negative cs times some function of uh, alpha. And we will take this inverse Laplace transform of y of alpha. Come on, I need to finish this recording without pencil breaking. Uh, this would give us u c of t, where c is this value in the negative alpha up here. So u7 of t multiplied by the uh, normal inverse Laplace transform of this guy with all of our t's in there replaced with t minus c. So this will give us 1 half, 1 half times what is this function over here? This looks like this looks like uh, it is in this form, where b is equal to two and a is equal to negative one. So we will get e to the negative t sine two t, but all of our t's are replaced with t minus seven. I I really don't know what's up with my pen. I'm uh, Sorry about that. For t greater than or equal to 7, y of t will just evaluate to uh, this, because our u1 of t, sorry, our u7 of t will evaluate to 1 for any t greater than uh, or equal to 7. So we get 1, uh, no, sorry, 1 half e to the negative t minus 7 sine of 2 t minus 7. The solution to this initial value problem is what? So here we have uh, some non-zero initial value terms here. So taking the Laplace transform of our left side, we will get alpha squared y alpha minus alpha y zero. So that's uh, negative one. And then minus y prime of zero plus four y alpha, taking our Laplace transform there. And then the Laplace transform of g of t will be capital G of alpha. We don't know what that function uh, is. Adding this 4 over and subtracting this alpha, we can uh, divide things out and kind of rewrite everything. We can say that y alpha multiplied by alpha squared plus 4 is equal to g of alpha plus four minus alpha, or y of alpha is equal to g of alpha times one over alpha plus alpha squared plus four plus four over alpha squared plus four, which I'll go ahead and rewrite as two and then a, nope, and then a times two over there. I hope you can, uh, by this point you can tell why, and then minus Come on, this is ruining my, ruining my recording. Alpha squared plus four. 
uh, like that, just fully dividing everything out. Uh, and all of these terms, it's relatively easy to take our Laplace transform, so the inverse Laplace transform of f, sorry, of y of alpha will give us, uh, this guy right here will inverse Laplace transform to 2 sine 2t. Two this one will inverse Laplace to minus cosine 2t. And then right here, uh, we're going to have to use this rule right here that the, uh, that the Laplace transform of f of t times the Laplace transform of g of t will give us this right here. Uh, the integral from 0 to t of the uh, inverse Laplace transform of capital F of s, but replacing all of our uh, t's with t minus tau's, and then uh, g of tau, which for us will just be little g of tau. So we have plus the integral from 0 to t of uh, whatever the inverse Laplace transform of this is. Let's change this to a 2 on top and multiply by 1 half. 1 half sine 2t, but instead of uh, t, we have t minus tau, and then g of tau d tau. Wow. Things are really breaking over here. It's uh, a, lot, a lot of fun for me, but uh, we, we, have, we have our answer, as long as I can find it up there. Um, that one's close, but nope. And then this one is looking just right. Two questions left. I hope the pen I hope the pen doesn't die. Uh, if y of t is the solution to this initial value problem, then what is uh, what is it? Taking taking our Laplace transform of the left side, we will get alpha squared y alpha, all of our initial terms going to zero, plus four alpha y alpha plus 5y alpha is equal to e to the negative 5 alpha. y alpha we can uh, multiply by alpha squared plus 4 alpha plus 5, so we can set this equal to e to the negative 5 alpha times 1 over alpha plus 4 alpha plus 5, uh, which is alpha plus 2 alpha plus 2 squared, that'll give us alpha squared plus 4 alpha plus 4, and then we're looking for a uh, plus 1 squared there. And this is uh, actually perfect because it's in uh, a form that we know how to deal with. We can take our inverse Laplace transform of y alpha and uh, see that first we have to deal with this kind of situation where we have e to the negative c alpha times some Laplace transform of f of t, uh, that's going to become uc of t, so u5 of t in our case, that's the 5 coming from there, times the Laplace transform of this with all of the t's replaced with t minus 5's. This thing itself is in the form uh, b over s minus a squared, where a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 1, so we can rewrite, we can, uh, well, not rewrite, but just solve it as e to the negative 2t. And instead of just t, we want t minus, not, the, not, not any of that, but t minus 5. And can't remember, was this sine or cosine? This was, uh, this was sine. So sine of bt, which is just t, so t minus 5 in there. And now taking a look through our options, I'm liking, no, not that one, that's a cosine. I'm liking option B. Finally, 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 uh, very similar to the problems we've been dealing with this whole time. Let's, let's just roll right through it. Alpha squared y alpha plus two alpha y alpha 
minus 15 y alpha is equal to e to the negative alpha. So y alpha is equal to e to the negative alpha times one over alpha squared plus plus two alpha plus 15. And can we factor this? Can we factor this? Um, oh, it's negative 15. So yes, we, we can. <laughs> I, already, I already lost it. Uh, this will be alpha plus five alpha minus three. And so we can run some partial fractions on this. A over alpha plus five plus B over alpha minus three is equal to uh, one over alpha plus five alpha minus three. Multiplying that uh, denominator up into everything, we get A alpha minus three A plus B alpha plus five B is equal to one. So A is equal to negative B uh, from setting our alpha coefficients all equal to each other, and negative 3a plus 5b is equal to 1. We can replace this, this uh, negative 3a with 3b, so this is 8b equals 1, or b is 1 over 8, so a is negative 1 over 8. So that means we can rewrite this as y alpha is equal to e to the negative e to the negative alpha uh, times this big quantity. And in fact, I'll factor out the eight just to make our lives a little easier. Minus one over alpha plus five plus one over alpha minus three. And we can take these inverse Laplace transforms pretty easily. Our one over eight, there we go. Our one over eight will stay outside of everything. Uh, it doesn't really care what's going on, and since we're multiplying by e to the negative one alpha, uh, we will have we will have u one of t, and we'll replace all of the t's in the in the uh, inverse Laplace tram version transformed versions of these guys with t minus this c value, so t minus one. This is negative e to the negative five t minus one and then plus e to the three t minus one. There we are. So we want a negative in front of our phi, so that's no good. That's also no good. And we want negative five t plus five and 3t minus 3. So there we go. Okay, um, yeah, this is kind of, kind of even, even recording it now, things are clicking better for me than they did at the start. Um, and I hope you get that, I was gonna say impression, but hopefully more than an impression that uh, you're, you're getting that feeling too working through these problems. They're pretty formulaic, um, it's just about grinding your way through the partial fractions that show up in the middle, you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> my midterm, my midterm due is in three hours, so wish me luck, because uh, this won't be uploaded until well past.